If you are thinking of using one of these tabletop ordering apps or uh, menu apps or a QR code on the table, um, I've got a few thoughts about this and, um, and I've got an experience of being a, a customer using this, which I want to share with you. Um, so if you're really thinking about it, this is very important to you so that you consider all of these aspects beforehand. And also, if you're just interested from the outside looking in what it's like, I think you'll uh, get a lot out of this as well. So about two years ago, I realized that this was going to be a thing, uh, that somebody was going to start pushing these apps. Um, and of course, they have. And over the last two years, particularly through COVID, they've grown in, um, in popularity. And I can see that they're really put booming in the pub dining scene because, um, of course, you don't have tables, uh, waiters to tables and things like that. So it's much easier to serve from the bar and have orders going behind the bar. However, um, when I saw this happening a couple of years ago, I thought about it and what would be the impact on me as a customer. Um, and what I thought was it's virtually going to be um, taking away something that I love about going to restaurants, which is the care about the person, somebody coming over, engaging with you, advising you, and then um, and then you make your choice and then they can upsell and cross sell. You can get a, a bottle of wine or a dessert or something like that. And all of that's going to go and this app's going to take the place. Now, the pitch from the app companies is you'll cut your staffing costs down, which is true. You probably will. Um, and the app always upsells and cross sells. So that's the pitch. So my experience has been that when I go into a place where they have these things, um, I feel a little alienated. There's no connection. There's no community. And then last week, um, I went to a place. We were going to um, a theater to see a show, and we had um, a small amount of time before we went to the show. So rather than going and getting dinner, we just went to get a burger. And we went into a place. I'm not going to name the place. Um, and they had this system. So we ordered. And first of all, for no reason at all, they asked me my email address. They didn't need that to deliver stuff to the table. So, all right, I'm in marketing. I know why they're collecting an email address uh, because they want to email me afterwards and do marketing to me. So, of course, I give them the wrong email address uh, because I knew it wouldn't stop them bringing the food to the table, which I wanted. So that was um, friction in the ordering uh, process for me. Um, then when we ordered, we had no acknowledgement that, that they had got the order other than something on my phone that said the order had been put in. It then, and we're, we're talking two burgers and fries, it then took about 30 minutes uh, before the order arrived at the table. And we were looking at the past. We could see the chefs standing around, doing this, doing that, people front of house, doing virtually nothing. Um, and we ordered two beers. Now, un in the normal circumstances where you've got people looking after a section, they would have noticed that we were kind of uncomfortable. We had to leave in order to go to a show. So we were kind of looking for our order. A good wait staff would have seen that. They could have come over and said, is everything all right? We said, oh, yeah, we've ordered this. And they could have said, let me go back of house, see how long it's going to be. Can I bring you your drinks while you're waiting? That kind of thing. None of that. Because remember, this is virtually um, like using a vending machine. You put your order in, you press the button, you put your money in, then you sit and wait for the uh, product to be delivered, except for it would be delivered immediately in a vending machine. This took a long time. Uh, then the food came um, and then we waited and waited and waited and the drinks didn't come and I had to stop somebody who was front of house say Are these drinks come in or what then it took another few minutes for that to arrive and it was just really really poor customer service um, I felt <laughs> uncared for uh, really really uncared for and you know, it was obviously we were just a walking wallet to this place. I'll never go back. Um, and it makes me wonder about what it would be like in the other outlets that belong to this company because they have several places. Um, so it was a really negative experience. Um, then the next morning we went to uh, a place for breakfast, Macchiato in central Sydney. Brilliant place. We went in there. They were 
straight to the door, opened the door to let us in. They greeted us, they seated us, they came over, presented the menus, got our coffee straight away. I asked for, for clarification about something on the menu. They talked about it, recommended this particular thing. I got it, it was great. They came back to check on us. And I was watching in there, the manager was directing operations and everybody got taken care of. And after the meal, I went over uh, just before we paid to find the manager. And, I, and he looked at me like I was going to complain. And I said, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for really taking care of us. We really felt looked after. Um, and in comparison, that compared with the night before, the night before was a zero out of 10 for customer service. And this was like a 10 out of 10. It was brilliant. As I said, the place called Macchiato, if you want to go in there and find out what it's like to be looked after, I really recommend it. Recommend it. It's in the center of Sydney. Um, so if you're thinking about using these apps, yes, you will reduce your staff costs, but you might have to put other staff on to take care of the problems that you're creating in there. Um, uh, it was just terrible. And it really reminded me that I thought right from day one that this was the way it's going to go. And I actually see in the future, if this continues to grow, uh, restaurant experience will split in half. And one half will be this fast food, robotic, vending machine, no care for the customer way of doing things. And the other side will be everything to do with uh, taking care of people at the table right up to you know linen tablecloths and the high-end stuff. And I honestly feel that people will pay more for that kind of service and will expect to pay less for being treated like a walking wallet. Um, so if you're thinking about doing this, just be aware that you're going to have to do quite a lot of front of house training to make up for the lack of care that is uh, part of this mechanism of, um, of tabletop ordering. If you're interested in being coached or having your marketing done uh, so that you don't fall into these traps and actually you can create more profit from your business, please get in touch with us through our website, restaurantprofits.com.au.